So this week we again have just one video and we're going to be talking this time about adjustment letters, which are the letters written in response to a claim letter. So as I said, adjustment letters are the letters that are written specifically in response to a claim letter that you have received. And generally speaking, companies uh, tend to make adjustments if they are reasonable because they want to keep the customers happy. The problem is, of course, a lot of people aren't very reasonable, to be honest. There are two kinds of adjustment letters, just as there were two kinds of claim letters. The positive adjustment letter, which is the adjustment letter that says, hey, yeah, I'll do the thing you want. And the negative adjustment letter that says, eh, no, don't think so. Positive adjustment letters grant the request that has been sought in the claim letter. Because you're saying yes, they're really very short and simple letters. You begin, however, with apologizing. You're typically granting the request because you did something wrong or there was something wrong with your product. So you wanna come right out and apologize for that and briefly explain what went wrong. Now, don't go into great detail with that explanation uh, because you wanna keep the focus on the customer and the current situation. You don't wanna be overly negative. But without any explanation at all, you leave the impression that problems are common or out of control in your organization. At the same time, you also don't wanna blame your own employees. That also reflects poorly on your firm. So you wanna keep it pretty brief and just, and just kind of put it out there, what went wrong. You also want to show appreciation to the customer, which is something you do partly through your tone and your words, but also you're often doing a little something, giving them a little something over and above the request that you are granting. So granting the request is making the adjustment. Showing appreciation to the customer is a little something extra. So an example of that would be, let's say um, you were sent an item that was defective and you want to exchange it for a functional item. They grant the request by making that exchange. They show appreciation to you by adding in a 10% off your next order coupon. So it's something that's relatively small compared to the size of the adjustment itself. And often it's something that can only be realized if the customer continues to do business with you. So you're not just say flat out giving them cash. They might take the money and run. But if you give them, say, a coupon off of an upcoming order, they can only realize that benefit if they continue to do business with you. So if that's appropriate, look for some way to do that. And because this is a positive adjustment letter, because you're giving them the answer that they want, you're going to use the direct organizational approach again. What that's going to look like is beginning with an apology and quickly offering the resolution or compensation for the situation. Now, you could switch the order of these two things around. You could start out by saying, we're going to refund your purchase price. We're so sorry this happened. Or you could just say, that would be one way. Or you could say, we're so sorry this happened. We're going to refund your purchase price. It doesn't really matter. Either way, you do these two things, one of these two things right off the bat. And whatever you don't do first, uh, you do it second. So right off the bat, both of these. And again, that brief explanation, if any, of why there was a problem. You want to offer some sort of incentive for further business in addition to the uh, adjustment you are making. And just in terms of your tone and your wording, you want to look forward to a future business relationship. So there's a good example of this on page 362 of the textbook. And it, it illustrates a very short and sweet letter. Uh, and they apologize and they offer uh, to make the situation better and then they offer them a coupon toward the next uh, catalog order. So they are doing all these things. So again, that's on page 362 in the textbook. Now I've pasted in here a little uh, screenshot from one of my favorite online blogs, which is called Not Always Right. And it's about customers that 
are not always the most rational. Remember we said before that businesses will generally make a requested adjustment if it's reasonable. So here's an example of someone complaining about a situation in a totally unreasonable fashion. They've called to complain about this business being closed and the business is open. They receive the phone call and uh, the customer wants to know why they can't be compensated because the business is closed, except the business isn't closed and it's just kind of crazy, right? So sadly, this is an extreme example, but a lot of times people want things that are unreasonable. Uh, and so for that reason, we often have to deliver bad news and refuse claims. This video is linked below in Blackboard Learn, and it talks a bit about delivering bad news. It isn't necessarily in reference to adjustment letters or claim letters, but it's just talking about approaches to delivering bad news to customers and how you can maintain a positive business relationship when you have to tell people things that they really don't want to hear. So it doesn't 100% apply to our situation, but it has a lot of useful tips. So I recommend you give it a read. Now we will be writing a negative adjustment letter for project nine. And in a negative adjustment letter, you will be refusing to grant the requested claim. You won't do that right away. Just as in the arguable claim letter, you didn't ask for the thing you wanted right away. You worked up to it. In a negative adjustment letter, you won't refuse the request right away. You'll work up to it. But it is the key characteristic that makes this negative. Because you do have to persuade them about the situation to convince them, maybe not that you're right, but at least they shouldn't keep hassling you, you do need to be thorough and persuasive. You need to build a case. You have to assume the recipient is going to be unhappy to hear no. So you have to go in trying to connect with them, trying to explain why you have to say no. They might not be happy, but at least they'll understand in that case. You also want to have a tone that is very diplomatic. You don't want to be insulting to them, even if they were as ridiculous as the customer in that previous slide. You, you don't want to act like they're an idiot. You want to be kind, but firm. You want to make the fact that you're refusing clear, but you do want to be positive and try to maintain the business relationship. And to do all these things, you're going to use an indirect organizational approach. So in this letter, that's going to look like, again, begin with general rapport. You know, you've, you've been um, very happy they've done business with you all these many years. You appreciate them very much. You want to open, again, being nice, holding out a hand of friendship. Then you also want to outline the facts referring to their original claim letter. Now you're going to do this very briefly. In the claim letter, you are going to kind of outline the chronology of events with some detail. In this sort of repeating of the chronology in the adjustment letter, you're going to very, be a little bit more brief. You know, you're going to say, I understand from your letter that A, B, and C happened. You're not going to actually have quite as much detail. But what this shows when you do that, it shows that you're not just sending them a form letter. You're responding to their specific letter. You understand what they said. If in some event you didn't understand, you're getting facts wrong, they could contact you again. Um, and you're adding your own understanding of the situation here. So maybe there's things that they don't know that you need to fill them in on. If there are any policies, you're going to want to explain those in a way that is friendly and not condescending. You don't want to, again, treat them like they're dumb because they forgot about this. You know, we're sorry. Uh, you only have a 90 day warranty on this product. It's been over six months, so this is not something that falls under the warranty. You might even enclose a copy of the warranty. So you're going to want to explain those details. And after you've done all these things, then you will refuse the claim. You'll want to try to close your letter in a way that is positive and helpful. Is there anything that you could do for them? Is there any suggestion you can make? Is there any uh, 
gesture of goodwill you can give them. So no, you can't replace the product. It was three months out of warranty. But you know what? You could still send them a discount coupon on their next order. Same way as with the previous uh, kind of adjustment letter where you're granting the claim, you still do a little something extra. Here you can't grant the claim, but what can you do? Is there anything you can do? And it just has to be something that is not in, in the measure of compensation. It's to show appreciation for their uh, continued patronage or their many years of being a valued customer, whatever it is. But it needs to be smaller than the thing that they're seeking. And again, it ideally should be something they can't realize unless they continue doing business with you. So do not look at the letter uh, in our textbook that is a negative adjustment letter. It really takes the wrong approach. What I recommend instead are a couple of different letters. One is the sample bad news letter for, in our textbook. That is on page 353. It's letter number 15.11. And so it is uh, conveying information uh, that the customer doesn't want to hear in the fashion that we want to see. Also, I have posted a sample letter in this folder in Blackboard Learn that illustrates the approach that I'm looking for. It has comments in the sidelines, uh, kind of pointing out the features of the letter. So you'll want to take a look at one or both of those letters. Um, and now let's see, we got some general tips for both kinds of adjustment letters. Remember, an individual took the time to write a claim letter to you. You have a letter from a person. So when you write back, you're writing to that person. Never address an adjustment letter to whom it may concern or valued customer. Nothing would make me feel less valued than being addressed that way. Address the person by name. Remember that even though uh, you're explaining your perspective, you need to have an, or an orientation toward the audience of the letter. So you have to explain things, but don't go into detail about your internal uh, organization's business or politics. Just give them the information they need to understand the situation. And as you do this, you'll want to use a friendly and positive tone. Don't blame the customer. Explain things, especially if you have to refuse, but don't blame. Don't blame your people. Explain what went wrong, but don't make it look too bad. Do something to try to keep the customer's business. So even if you have to refuse the claim, what can you do for them? So look for that opportunity. And close. Uh, if you are enclosing anything with your document, uh, such as uh, a sample of the contract that or a copy of the warranty or a gift certificate or anything, make sure your letter has an enclosure line. So for project nine, as I have previously indicated, you will be writing a negative adjustment letter. You'll be refusing the claim of the letter you wrote in project eight. So I'm assuming you've already taken a look at the instructions for project nine. So here are some basic elements of that assignment. You'll be writing a one-page letter as Jane Breitenbach from the YMCA. So you're pretending to be Jane Breitenbach and you're responding to the letter from Project 8 and you are going to refuse the Academy of American Poets request for an adjustment. You're not going to be able to accept a thousand dollars. Because this is a negative claim letter, you will need to use the indirect letter organization where you begin by building rapport referring to what they wrote in the previous claim letter, adding information uh, about your understanding of the situation, why you know there's this misunderstanding or whatever maybe, why you're going to have to refuse it, and then you refuse the letter. See if there's something else you can do for them and try to end by uh, some means to keep their business. You will need to be sure that your letter in Project 9 refers to information from the letter you wrote for Project 8. And that's going to be up in the, um, basically right after the opening of the letter, where you kind of re quickly review what was discussed in the previous letter. You're going to have to invent some details. So 
you were given some details with Project 8 instructions. You have a little bit of information in Project 9 instructions, but you may have to invent extra information. You may have to invent uh, why Ryan, Nichols, and Sue uh, Harrington couldn't help them out. Why couldn't they do that? Why didn't they get notification of the rate increase? You may have to invent that information. Why did the rates go up? What, what caused that? So think about things that you can add. Just make sure they don't contradict information from the letter in Project 8. These two letters have to exist in the same universe. Now that said, as people say, there are two sides to every story and you don't always know uh, all the facts. So there may be things that they don't know that you uh, are able to explain and that doesn't mean that they're not factual. And he will refuse the claim, but you would like to maintain the business relationship. So you might be thinking about what you can do to help them out in addition to having a positive tone overall. So here are some considerations. Again, think about your audience. Think about their relationship. You can't diss someone who's been doing business with you for over 20 years. You can't uh, expect them to come up with money uh, that you know a nonprofit organization that hasn't budgeted for won't have. So think about those uh, aspects of the situation. Think about what you want. So it has to be clear what needs to happen next. One of the problems I sometimes see in this letter is the writer will clearly refuse the claim, but we don't know what you want them to do, which is probably going to be send you money. So make sure it's clear what they need to do, whether that is to speak to you about a payment arrangement, to, to remit a check for $5,000 uh, by you know a certain date. What do you want to have happen? That should be in the letter, not at the beginning, at the end of the letter, of course. Think about all the reasons and explanations and details that are you're gonna include. So as I said before, you're gonna have to explain why did the rates increase? Why was there some confusion? Why didn't they uh, find out about this? Did, did you send them something? Maybe it got lost in the mail. Uh, did you renovate your facility and, and that's why the rates went up? Maybe your taxes went up. So think about all the things that might explain things. You're not gonna convince them to be happy about it, but you want them to understand what happened. Is there anything you might hypothetically enclose? Again, you don't have to actually enclose anything. You just have to write the letter. But if you're saying in your letter, well, we did send you out notice of this, Maybe you would enclose a copy of that previous communication. Or if there was an addendum to the previous contract that stated rates can increase without notice, then you would enclose that. So anything that would be relevant, mention it as an enclosure. You don't have to create that enclosure. Understand that your reader is likely to be unhappy about this, this claim. Be sensitive to that fact. And therefore, think about anything that you can do. You want to keep their business. So you can't accept only $1,000. Could you discount a little bit? Could you uh, accept the total amount over, over a course of time in payments? Um, can you give them a discount on the next booking that they make with you? maybe in a smaller room that fits their budget better. Uh, what can you do? So think about that. So this week, you are going to write Project 9, the Refused Claim Letter. You're not going to be quite as negative as this guy in the meme here, but you are going to have to say no in a kind but firm fashion. And next week, we are shifting gears. You're going to need to read chapter 22, which is on different kinds of proposals. And look at these types of proposals. We'll also be discussing a little bit about being persuasive. And that is what next week's uh, video lecture will be about. In the meantime, if you have any questions about this week, perhaps if you wonder, can I do a certain thing in my uh, response in the adjustment letter, uh, you can post that to the questions discussion forum and I'll be happy to answer that question. Catch you next week.